Ice wasn't that big of a deal for Giants before. They are even banning away the Thresh. Severe first pick is going to be my guess then for Atri. After seeing also how H2K used it in the last game. And then, if I'm Giants here, I'm going all in. I'm going to say, you know, I want Severe. TP Diana mid. Not TP <laughs> Diana mid. But I want a composition that can dive onto H2K. And if they want to play these mid-game fights, Diana could work. There's not TP, no TP. <laughs> if they want to take these early to mid-game fights, we're going to try and match them. Standard lanes. We don't want to lane up anymore. It doesn't work for us. Just match them on the top side if that is. Go and try and pick an all-in composition. It seems to be the only option almost for Giants. So, new jungler in means Elise does not get banned from H2K. And they're on red side as well. But they have taken away a Zia. get it now. It is Silver first pick. So, Batong Yoka, coming from solo queue, played for Denial, was actually substituted for Kirai in recent weeks. What will he be running and will they lock it in, in this rotation? Well, if he gets Elise, he couldn't really ask for more. First game here on the big stage. H2K is up 2-0. I saw some people are questioning, why would you swap a guy in? You're up 2-0, you know, it's playoff. Well, the thing is here, more and more teams, again, in Korea and China and so on, are using substitute, substitutes really well. Because again, it gives you another dimension on your team, more players, there's more than five players that can work well together and it gives you more options. So I think this is smart, you're, down, you're up to zero. You have honestly had zero problems so far. I don't think swapping in your, a, a new jungler is gonna make your entire team collapse. And especially true when it's been H2K's lanes that have basically won the game for them in both previous matches. Giants are 0-9 against H2K historically. Their 10th defeat could send them to the regional qualifier as the sixth seed. Remember, even if Giants lose right now, they have one more shot to make Worlds if they can run the entire table and take out everybody in the regional qualifier. But that is a big ask for a team that is struggling to handle even relatively basic lane swap decisions at this stage in the competitive scene. They yep. lock in Evelyn and Brown. Some flanking opportunities. But just look at the whole setup here for H2K again. They're saying, we're gonna leave Elise and Sivir open. We know you want the Sivir pick. So if you take it, well, we take what is considered the tier one jungler, the best jungler right now, and we get the best support available as well because of the fact that Thresh Morgana has been banned away in this particular matchup here. So they're basically just getting everything they want because now down the bottom lane, you can do a Corki into Sivir. At level six, you're more than fine on the Corki. You can do Tristana into Sivir. Good matchup for the Tristana. Once we can start getting that BF sword and as long as they're Sivir, I mean, okay, farm matchup against the Tristana, because you can spell shield the bomb, but that is not a problem for Tristana itself. So, it is super tricky for for Giants, and how are they suddenly going to win the lanes with Sivir? That's one of the reasons she's being played less, if you look at someone, a, lane, uh, a region like Korea. First of all, they do lanes so different. Yeah. So, like, you don't have Sivir, like, they have freezing lanes with the AD carry. Sivir is not that great in that one, in terms of the one-on-one against top laner. Second as well. There's a lot of these lane matchups where she's just simply not winning her lane anymore. Or she tends to fall behind that lane once she hits 6, 7 and so on. Um, and that's why people are playing her less and less. Or one of the reasons there's obviously different ones. But yeah, there's the Tristana for H2K. Basically somewhat the same setup. A mix, I guess, of the two games we've seen. A mixture of the two. What does Ryu run in the mid lane to round out H2K's team composition? There's a lot of damage coming out from H2K. There's split pushing options, there's even some team fighting options. You can just go Ari if you want Alistair. to. You have fantastic dive set up. Full, full pick comp, basically. You had their Alistar Fizz, who were fantastic at diving before. Now you add in Elise, probably the best jungler. Again, you can reset the tower aggro by repelling up in the, into the air. You have that fantastic pick potential with your cocoon, the, the, the burst, single target burst coming. H2K by going Ari here will just have that perfect pick set up to set up these tower dives again and again. Twisted Fate could stop the dives from happening, but then HK is going to do exactly what they did in the last game. Let's not go for the high-risk situation of having to dive for a few kills. Let's walk into the jungle instead. Play around the vision control. Make it a low risk when we create picks, when we take team fights, when we take towers. You can do exactly the same here. Almost no matter what mid lane pick, they lock in just with the first four picks. Well, that Twisted Fate will be the first time that we've seen Pepe Nero on that champion in summer. 
and he's going to need to have a phenomenal performance. Much like we talked about the first Shen Stand United and how impactful it has to be to get whichever lane he's TPing to ahead. The first destiny from TF is often so crucial because of the opportunity cost, because of okay. you can lose. And we will be seeing our first Karthus in playoffs. So, Karthus, we have to remember, benefits a lot from some of the new item changes that happened one or two patches ago. Uh, Rylice, as an example, 40% slow. Absolutely fantastic for the Karthus. Um, at the same time, when you play against a severe composition, you know they're gonna aim, in, aim to run at you. Well, if you're a Karthus, you want people to run at you. You're like, come, yes, come to me, please. <laughs> And this setup here from Giants runs extreme low amount of engage again. It's all basically focused around flank from the Evelyn, flank from the Trundle with the Pillar, and then Saber popping ulti to get the rest of the team in there with them. But again, you're gonna run into the open arms of big teddy bear Ryu, <laughs> who wants to hug you in this team fight. Hug you with Defile switched on and a wall of pain behind you. Deficio, first Karthus of summer. Love it. Love me some Karthus. It's, a, it's about time. After the changes with these items here, man, come on, it was meant to be. Karthus needs to be a thing. The last time I remember somebody speaking so passionately about a Karthus was Froggen, about a year ago. At I think it's IEM. a Danish thing, you know? It could be he a Danish me. thing. It could be. We'll need to see how Ryu can perform, because if he's going to play as well as he has in the two previous games, this could be a clean sweep 3-0. and oh. H2K are fighting for a shot at the semi-finals and Origin and Giants, they just want to stay in the playoffs. Giants need to reverse sweep a team they have not beaten in the last 12 months. The flags are lit as we load onto the Summers Rift for Game 3 in this best of five. All right, let's see what build Rio wants to, to aim for here. I would assume seeing again with the Rylas being strong with also Tier, once you get it fully stacked, gives extra AP in the late game, really benefits the Karthus. We can see just the tier Rylai's build, which makes you even fairly strong once we start hitting the mid game. Obviously, the goal here for, for H2K is the fact that you want Ryu to sit and be this farm machine in the mid lane. And you have then his ulti to tip the scale of the sidelines even further in your advances. But Tonyake, my friend, you are in your first game. Well, it is his first game on the LCS stage, and he's going to be able to get away. Ghost used from Pepe. No summoners on the side of H2K. Giants unable to secure a kill on the spider. So is, again. Is that enough? Is that enough pressure on Betonyaka early? Probably not, because he's still got his son. Yeah, he's still alive. He didn't. <laughs> he's kind of walked out. We will find out how he performs on the next episode of Gank Your Lane. Which lane is he going to gank? We don't know. Minions I'm going to say top lane. Spawned. I would be more than happy to go gank this Trundle here with uh, my Fizz as well. Then again, though, when it comes to standard lanes, we've seen HK swap. Finally, though, Giants realize this is going to happen, and they counter it. So they go top lane. They take the 2v2 lane. Remember, Braum into Alistar. It's a good lane for the Braum here. At the same time, Sivir in the early stages, you can have some very effective trades, or you can just basically try and shove the wave in. Allow the Evelyn then to play more of the invading game. Obviously though, if you're on Evelyn, you find an Elise, you gotta think twice, because her early damage is insane, but Evelyn very often is about getting that first jump for herself, because she does have decent burst damage with the E, obviously getting that double hit. So if you have a pushing lane in, in the top, at least, that might enable the Evelyn to invade him. We're also going to get one on one the bottom side, though. Eventually, as it stands, the top lane is holding hands of the respective junglers. Red buff being cleared as Frederick and Whirlib started on the Krugs, moving their way out to where their duo currently is. H2K on the other side, moving their way up top. So, I don't want this TP in bottom. Whirlib doing the same, and there's our 1v1. So, surprisingly enough, game one, when we saw the Trundle pick, Whirlip took the red buff, even though they saw it was a lane swap and he never got to use it because, again, it was a lane swap. He walked down and killed the tower, and then his red buff disappeared. Now he knew it was going to be a standard lane, so I wonder why they don't give him that red buff again, if it was, of course, the plan, because these early trades, especially also with a red buff from a trundle, can be super difficult for the Fizz. You normally want to get a few levels under your belt before you really want to start going aggressive, if you are auto-omni, in this case. They gave it over to Frederick, though, so let's see what he can use 
the red buff for. At the moment, top lane is going to be very even between the two guys, but they might be shoved in. So that's not a ganking option. Twisted Fate as well in the mid lane is going to early push with the red card. At least from the start, but Ryu can easily shove it back. You are casters after all. Yeah, has got several games played on this Evil and pretty good win ratio as well, 75%. And he's going to spot Pitsong Yoka. Not really going to be able to do much about it though. Equal levels and Pitsong's got a lot more HP. So Frederick's just going to chill. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't really know what he wants to do for the time being. Well, he got vision at least, saw the recall. Potentially a gank in mid lane if you land a gold card from Pepinero. Ryu is very close to his own tower though. Might just be able to force a flash. Flash and exhaust on Ryu's Karthus, so any all-ins that happen will be made slightly less effective. 26 CS to Pepe's 19. Early advantage to Ryu in the lay waste. Frederick is still hanging around this mid lane, been here for at least 20, 25 seconds. There's no real opportunity for gank unless Pepe tries to force it. Flash is available as is Ghost. Gold cards prime. Flash away. And they trade Ghost for Flash. Just saw Pibinero allowed the lane to start pushing back. He didn't keep playing the minions for himself. He didn't want to trade with Red Card in the middle of them with Ryu as well. So, Malfredi used a lot of time. He got the Flash for himself, but also H2K knows he went down towards the bottom side again, so they can communicate to Odo Amnit. There's a chance he's going to be in the bottom lane. So now Odo Amnit just needs to be a bit careful. Should be able to jump out, though, in case Frederick pumps out, but again, look at the wave, pushing down, so Frederick is using the minion wave to try and find ganks, but Tong Yoki, though, is nearby, pink wall play, so HTK are reading a situation really well, saying again, there's a chance maybe on the bottom side, be careful, have your jungle nearby, if the 2v2 breaks out, at least damage is going to be insane. Frederick really wants something to happen, everyone is going to have the support of Tong, I think he stepped into minion vision definitely now, and that means Lulix is going to start backing away, so time investments and Theoretical possibilities for Lulex not paying off. We should have a look at that top lane because we still see Audrey and Godfrey pushing the wave into Hyanan and Kasing. They're even on CS. It seems to be evening right. out at the moment. This He's not watched it too closely. Exactly what we talked about though. How, yeah, the Sivir wants to try and shove the wave in early, which could enable an invade, especially if Pivotal could shove mid lane at the same time. Frederick was looking for the Kangs instead though. But Tristana is more than fine turning that into a farm lane. You don't have to try and go for any trades if you can block your bomb anyway with the spell shield. Now, you might be able to do something here. Problem is, Frederick sneaks behind Odo Amne, so he gives Odo Amne an escape. Because he's basically telling Odo Amne, you can queue through me and walk out. So whenever you gank a fist, don't sneak in behind him. Because then he just queues away from you. Disappointed dad, Deficio, telling you how it is. But it's true. And we finally see Frederick backing off. Gonna pick himself up that Skirmisher Saber. As we poke our eyes up top, 47 CS to 48. Both AD carries getting to that cusp of the AD, uh, BF Swords rather. And Audrey not afraid to just keep spamming those ricochets out. But it's a sustain lane. Farm lane. Yeah, yeah, it's just turned into a farm lane. Nothing else. Pippinair wants to hit level 6 though. Once he trades a bit of damage on the tongue, Yoken, no help on the nearby. Kakun connects though. Remember that stun timer went up on this patch. Panero forced to flash away defensively. Yeah, we need to see what Petong Yoken wants to max second. Because now that with the fact that Cocoon is 1.6 seconds at rank one, you don't have to max it anymore. You can max W second. And that's why I've seen at least in solar queue, which obviously gives you a lot of extra damage because of that. Longer duration on your cocoon in the early stages. But I want to see where Pepinero is going to focus that first gank. You would expect it to be the bottom lane. Try and snowball Whirlip so he can become a split pushing threat. Then Pepinero can always take over the other lane if they want to play the 1 3 1 setup and stay, get away from this Carthus. Don't try and 5 or 5 team fight on the Carthus. Deficio, you can never get away from Requiem, which is on Ryu at the moment. Level 7. We did see Oda 1 there teleport down to the bottom lane. Whirlip is yet to back. Currently sitting on around a thousand gold. So for the time being, Whirlip's got a small amount of pressure advantage, but has not converted that farm gold into any combat stats. So Odawamne will be able to try burst him down. They'd be respecting the power of the wall of pain. Oh yeah, you just used your flash for sure. <laughs> but Ryu here is not going for the tier Rylai's build I was hoping for. Instead he's gonna go right of ages still. Late game, yes, it does give you a bit of extra AP. So in terms of the late game scaling, 
But if you go Rod of Ages Rhylize, I feel like you are delaying some of your core items. Again, stacking a mass amount of AP is so effective on the Karthus. So, like, you don't want to delay your death cap for too long. If you want to play, again, there... I don't even want to play the defense. You don't even need an hourglass here if you are real. Just go full damage. I mean, again, people are going to be fighting on you. So, let's see how long he does. If he just goes Rod of Ages, Death Cap, Void stuff as an, as an option or what he decides to do later. The way Ryu's been performing lately and the way Giants have not really been able to pressure him, why not just go full damage? Sure. So, keep in mind, Wurlip still yet to back. So, sitting on a lot of money. Frederick does have Agony's Embrace available. And he's got the support of Godfred. There is a Requiem up. Oduwamne is going to just play full trickster away. And you have no lockdown. Yep. You have a slow from the Brom and then potentially a knockup, I guess, if he does manage to connect his ulti, but then Odomni really needs to be sleeping. You got the pillar. You got the slow coming in from Evelyn as well. So you have no ways of stunning the Fizz. So you can just always jump away. You need the Twisted Fate to join in. So if, if so you- Twisted Fate? If you invest two guys on the bottom side. Ryu, is he gonna get stunned? Frederick has been exhausted. Agony's Embrace comes out late. We'll give a little bit of a shield. Ryu still alive. Kasing and Batong Yoko were close enough to get involved there. And the fight plays out. Requiem is up and available. Oduwamne has gone all in on Wurlip. It's going to go play full Trickster. First blood secured for Wurlip, but it will be a Requiem. No, the damage over time plus Ignite means kill credit to Oduwamne with an assist on that Requiem. Really nice flash though from Oduwamne. He flashed out of the damage from the Trickster. Managed to win the one-on-one. -on -one. Obviously, again, Karthus came in. But that gank before here, I would like to see Giants do the same, but then add in the Twisted Fate. If you want to do that, because one kill, when you have a Trundle as well, can very easily transition into a tower. You can take down these towers super fast with Trundle and Twisted Fate in the side lanes. That's also what we're going to see later on, by the way. The fast pushing of a Sivir and, and Twisted Fate, and then the tower damage. Remember, Trundle can queue the towers. So, Giants needs to know how many resources they have to use to get a kill. Otherwise, you're just wasting time on multiple guys if you go bot without any hard CC against Odomni. Talking about time. The average time to secure your first tower. Stark difference between these two teams. A lot of that can, of course, stem from the lane swaps. In fact, the Giants is traditionally not in them. And in this game, the first non-lane swap of our series. No tower fall in 11 minutes. So playing a little bit more into Giants comfort zone. And we'll see whether or not H2K can beat Giants when Giants are comfortable. But Song Yaka will be able to land a very easy cocoon as Whirlip face checks. Shumma Waters is not available for a few more seconds. It may not even be needed. Playful Trickster will secure the kill, but look how much damage Whirlip's already putting out. Yeah, I mean, this Trundle here, again, in the one-on-ones, he's going to go for Hydras. He's probably going to go for Play of the Ruin King. It is extremely strong. The problem is, again, Giants are not investing the right resource into him. Pepinair, remember, he used ulti in the mid lane before, even though he spotted two or three guys coming down to help Ryu. So that was, once again, effectively a wasted cooldown. So first you had three guys trying to gank Fizz in the bottom lane. That was never going to work. Then you waste your Twisted Fate ulti in the mid lane instead of having it here to assist him and turn this one around. It's, it's all these small things that has gone against Giants. But they just haven't been as effective as H2K in this series here. And in this game, they could have most likely snowballed this Trundle already. In this game, Whirlib is now ahead in CS against Oduwamne's Fizz. Previous game, Whirlib was playing the Shen and got heavily, heavily put behind. It'll be a little while longer before Oduwamne is uh, strong enough to start trading, and there's that tower pressure. 12 and a half minutes, a little so quicker than Giants average, and it's global gold to Giants. They hold the gold lead, thanks to that objective. Pepe's gonna keep chasing, but it's optimistic at best. They did get reused Flash once more. Yeah, but been quite a while between the last gank, or oh, well, the first game we saw from Frederick and now this one, so yeah, Flash was ready again. But this Trundle, I'm not even sure if Old Army is going to reach a point where he feels like he really wants to one-on-one -on -one Whirlip. With the fact that he's also, what we normally see in Fizz is like Trinity Force, then you start building tanky from there. Obviously that goes in favor of Whirlip with the fact he's going to steal away so many of those stats. We need to see that once Kalthus ulti really starts becoming powerful, he will obviously switch the fight quite a lot around in terms of who can take each other down. 
But then Pepinero has to be able to join in. Whirlip has been such a good player for you if he gets a good start and on a split push. Use it, snowballing. There's no blue buff, my friend. A repel out from Matong Yaka. There's nowhere to go, and he is down. Pepe Nero gets the kill with the destiny involved. I can hear Giants screaming on stage. And in the third game, the last life opportunity for Giants, they maintain a minor level of control. This really is the best start we've seen Giants have against H2K. I'm not only talking the two games we've seen today, I'm also talking the two games we've seen in the summer split between these teams. They've always been really far behind in the mid game, but now, small goal lead, top lane tower though, taking a lot of damage from this one, and Yarnan can keep doing it. Now he has that BF sword for himself, and so you can start shoving in the waves, you can start taking down towers. But the Trundle is the man to watch for me on the side of Giants. If Oramne can never touch him, Giants will always have that pressure, and it's not exactly like HTK is running a whole lot of engagement on their side to force fights while the Toronto Spit push. Now, Kassing's gonna try zone away Adrian got Red Tower secured for H2K, so that will give H2K a minor gold lead. As a quick update for anybody that's trying to follow any of the other regional tournaments happening at the moment, Deficio Productions just informed me that Shiktas, I believe it was, won 3 1 in the Turkish finals. Double Doge. Here we go. We'll see how they perform. Whirlip, the man that Deficio wants to watch, flashes in. He's already 1v1. Oduwamne, but he will go down to reuse Karthus. If there's any champion you really don't want to feed, it's going to be Karthus. Guaranteed damage thanks to that death to fight passive. Well, the thing is, Whirlip keeps getting fights and he keeps winning them on his own. But then HK is just better at sending down guys to, to stop him or like at least return a kill. Now he was obviously overextending himself instead of the fact that the rest of Giants were back in base, but it's still for him. The fact he keeps getting these kills means he's gonna get that Blade Ring King a lot faster. And once you have that, yeah. I mean, you kill waves so fast with Hydra, you get to towers, you destroy them in, in a few seconds. As long as the rest of Giants can avoid the engage coming from H2K, again, we mentioned how there's no hard engage. Do maybe want to take it back a little bit in the case we're gonna, probably going to get Righteous Glory, Alistar, or the Talisman, and then the Wolf and Carpus. That can be enough for HK to start fights. But it needs a lot of setup where Giants with this Trundle here can just destroy towers. So Adri once again finds himself between multiple members of H2K. Even behind his own tower, he will be going down. Yarnin gets the kill. Uh, uh, Whirlip has teleported in. Here comes Pepe Nero as well. The Requiem is being channeled, and it won't be enough for a kill. Whirlip is trying to put the pillar down. He finds himself with Tong Yaka once more. Now Kasing's trying to escape. Gold card pulled. It will hold Kasing in place as the Buster Shot pushes Pepe Nero away. H2K get themselves a Frederick. one for two trade and a tower and Frederick, he's gonna get a big shield from Agony's Embrace, but it's not enough. That was a terrible flank with no support. Proly is smiling for days as H2K are extending their gold lead. Kill credit to Oduwamne. And apologies to viewers following the Turkish scene. I got it wrong. It was Dark Passage that beat Besiktas. Dumbledore, not victorious to fish yet. Well, no Dumbledore hype then. Rydal, though, former Giants support, is on Dark Passage, so congratulations to him and the team beating Besiktas. Our game, though, congratulations to H2K and getting four kills down the bottom lane, I believe it was. Giants came down with TPs, everything. Pepineo joined in. But with the Carthus ulti and the fact that they'd already gotten that first kill on Atri, it was a fight in favor of H2K. And then Frederick, in the very end, goes in, realizes he was caught between three members and had nothing to do there. H2K, despite Giants having a better start, you see one of these mistakes coming in and then quickly H2K punish them. Not for the first time this series. Audrey being focused by H2K. That particular time was a dive from H2K. They caught him be between two towers. That meant that H2K accelerated ahead. Giants will at least reply. Fan vote swinging heavily now in favor of the team that's 2-0 for fairly obvious reasons. But will Werler be able to pull enough pressure? Will Werler be able to play the split push game effectively enough? We, we talked a lot about styles and, and growth and history to Fisher, and Werler, when he was playing Jax, would try to split push and not 
always make it work. We'll ask you to reply on that in a moment as Oda Wamnek is going to get caught out. The Pillar of Ice will prevent his escape. And kill credit should go to Wurlib. Chomped for his fourth kill of the game. Smart little trap to set up here with the pink one on the side of Giants. Race of H2K. We're just expecting to kind of reset the map and go to each lane and sit and farm them out. So clearly not expecting it. Pippinero, though, getting jumped. Obviously, Kalthus ult is ready inside of Rio, so Yannick can play a bit aggressive, but that's the thing with Wallip. He's always doing a fantastic job getting fed on his own, but then sometimes we have seen where Giants should have been split pushing. They have opted to go team fighting instead. We're talking mainly about Jax here, but he hasn't played off. But this game, he's also itemizing the MR against the Fizz for some of the damage coming in. And he's just gonna be such a beast. Wurlip is going to be able to get the tower. Destiny's being channeled for Pippinero to come into the middle lane, but he may take more damage than he wants. But Tongyaka is going to get caught by a lot of skill shots. Repel unable to prevent that damage. Giants, they're digging deep, and they're keeping themselves in this third game. At 20 minutes, they are not down their traditional 2,000 gold. And that's not something we say very often. And we need to get that right to before we really start seeing the engages. Pippinero, though, He's going to be forced to go. Flash comes out of Ryu. No flash for Pippi Nero. No. no lay away. So Pippi survives the all-in from Ryu at the cost of Ghost. And H2K really want to look for the big team fights. But in order to get these fights here, they either got to start setting up complete vision control around certain objectives, Baron or the Dragon. Dragon is not alive, so they're already switching up towards the top side with the Baron. Remember, Karthus can destroy it. No. Fizz as well. <laughs> Elise oh, as well. Wow. You have an insane team of taking down Baron. Look at the HP. We're 20 minutes in, guys, by the way. Whirlip is coming, though. Whirlip. Flash has available. Baron's down to 1,520 seconds. It's secured. H2K, I've got it. But how many will they lose? Reuse down. He's going to start channeling the Requiem. It cannot be avoided. H2K stay in the pit. They picked up a kill onto Godfrey. Frederick is trying to rampage across. The hate spikes are not enough. It is a two for three, and Baron to H2K. 20 minutes in with Karthus, Elise, Fizz. The damage is insane on a single target. We see Giants, though, they very quickly realize it's going on, but it's just too late for him to move in. There's no reaction from Pippinero. He's stuck in base with no ulti, so it's a tricky situation for Giants and cannot do enough to stop it. So H2K. Despite not being able to respond to the split push, they keep finding small openings, either through a tower dive or now through... Literally just said it. They need to start looking at some of these objectives. With vision control, instantly go Baron. H2K secure the earliest Baron of summer. In around 20 minutes, 20 seconds. It had literally just spawned. Subscribing a little bit to Fnatic's style of early dragon play. They did lose a couple of members in the trade, though. But with the gold lead they've built up and the... The pushing power, it may help. Godfrey and Whirlib, they're looking for the two-man. Giants need to be careful they don't invest too many members here because you have Baron buff on H2K's side. The wave here becomes a lot less effective on the side of Giants against it. And at the same time, sacrificing one kill in a lane where there's no outer turret to take down. If H2K can then break in towards the base of Giants, that would have been more than fine for them. So Godfrey wisely enough recalls. Let Whirlib handle himself open that top end, but there's no TP for him. So H2K can play super aggressive, and they should, because they can always get a 5 versus 4. Crucially, AD carry and top lane are maintain that Baron buff. And Oda Wamnik and Kyanen have not grouped up. Destiny comes middle, insta-teleport from Oda Wamnik, keeping that minion alive. Flash pulverize, or rather just the headbutt pulverize, doesn't connect. Why would Pepinero go in, though? You have no TP on your trundle. Super risky play. Batar just died, so you knew H2K were in your jungle. Has to flash out now. He is Power dying. dive coming in from H2K. Kasing has put down the unbreakable will. Pepinero is out without that flash or that destiny. No vision. Hyonan may get taken down from Audrey. Audrey's alive on the back line, but it's Fredericks that's got the double kill. Requiem's being channeled. He's going to get one with the defile and no more with the Requiem. I take it back as one more lay waste will correct that. Three for three. Audrey stays alive, and Giants are still 2,000 gold down at 23 minutes. That will be shrinking with another tower kill. Yeah, these towers, again, they go down so fast. They might be able to take another one. Whirlip will destroy it. 
H2K, they got the Righteous Glory. We talked about how they needed that to start these fights here. Instant dive. Oh, Patonga, I don't think you want this trade. Definitely doesn't. Wurle Benadry will focus the objective. And they'll keep things even. Despite the poor start to that fight, Giants come away looking okay. I want to see if Kissing headbutted himself out of the tower aggro and it switched over to someone else on the side of H2K. Also, Janen jumped in very aggressively and was suddenly caught behind the tower. And it just felt like H2K overcommitted to that one and didn't realize the amount of damage coming in from Giants. It was very clear being like, okay, Pepinero just wasted Flash. He's gonna be our target. Go straight for him, kill him, clean up the fight. But there's still the troll here standing around. He's the beast. The Cutlass has been picked up for Whirlip to go with his Spirit Visage and the Hydra. Teleport will be available very shortly for Whirlip. And Pepper Nero has got that destiny up. Death cap for both mid laners. I want to see where this uh, blasting wand goes for Ryu. But Pepper Nero, wow, he's jumped in and he's taken so much damage. He's dead before Ryu can get killed. And Ryu stays alive. That did not go the way Pepe and Giants wanted it to. We've seen some very, very greedy teleports from Pepe Nero. Again, he gets full vision. He sees Elise is nearby and still believes they can take the fight. Really getting punished for it. Ryu is a man, he's gone full damage. No hourglass on that. <laughs> what we were talking about with this Rod of Ages first death cap as well. Manly League of Legends with Ryu's cards. Now he can go Rylize if he wants to. You're obsessing on Rylize, the Dude, it's so good on Carthus. <laughs> Land one Q and the guy's slow for 40%. I mean, how is he ever gonna escape? Well, Ryu doesn't need it yet. Six. Two and five. Helps that he has been gifted a few kills here and there. But for H2K, they got down one tower in the mid game. But considering their power, they can now take more. Whirlip is down. Finds himself caught out by three members of H2K. He had the support of Godfrey and may have felt more comfortable than he should have. Chum the Waters is going to connect on Godfrey and Oduam is trying to chase out Adri. Godfrey falls. Oh, everybody from Giants are falling. Three members down. H2K. Give themselves a 6,000 gold lead in a few minutes. They take an inner turret and now they're on the inhibitor turret too. It took one item and some levels on Ryu to stop Giants from really setting up effective split pushes. Because now with Righteous Glory and that wall from Karthus, you have enough engage on the side of H2K. Also, because Giants are overextending in the lane, so there's always that chance to start the fight. This time there was no tower in the way. They clean up a few more kills for themselves. And we simply haven't seen the synergy between a Twisted Fate and your Swift Pushing Trundle that can be so deadly to stop any counterplay from H2K. It's, it's not been there. So Hyanen trying to get away. Frederick is chasing from the jungle. Buster Shot keeps Hyanen alive for a few more seconds. Rocket jump over the wall. We saw a teleport from Whirlip into the jungle as well. And it did not pay off. 25,000 damage has been dealt by Ryu this game already. And the double anybody else in his team. I like real really playoffs. putting, really putting H2K in their semi-final hopes in his backpack. Ryu's the there is, guy. Hey, wait, there's a Rylize. There's a Rylize to Fisher. Oh, I know. When Ryu builds one, we'll talk about him more, but Frederick's got Rylize on hate spike. Yeah, Perma it's slow. It's very good on, on, on Evelyn. Especially because you are gonna be building around these flanks. The problem still with the Evelyn pick is that what are you really going to do in the fights? Because again, you're gonna walk into this Carthus here and you're Job is obviously to constantly try and CC slow down people with these flanks coming in. Dumb, dumb, Same dumb. Checking. The pillar comes down. Vision is up there from Destiny. All of H2K are grouped. And Godfred, he's going to throw out the Fisher before he runs away. Shut down kill onto Ryu. But he's in the middle of the jungle. Frederick and Whirlip, they're trying to do what they can. But Frederick's down. Whirlip's down. Three for two. Audrey follows suit. Pepe and Godfred. Oh, trade. The last trade. one alive. That's right. Ryu death defied finally takes him off the map. Even trade will at least stall the game, which is not a bad thing. But you're feeding H2K more kills in gold too. Well, same for Giants though. Three kills when you are behind, you take that fight very often. No objections were taken. Let's see what happens. Godfrey takes all the damage in the start. Flank coming in, we just talked about it from Frederick. Old Omni gets single out, doesn't manage to take down a target. That's again why they trade even. And also whenever 
Whirly is going crazy in there. He's taking one or two guys down with him. Got his Blade of the Rune King. Got his Merc trades. Ryu didn't actually use Requiem in that fight, so that will be up for the next time. Giants try a Death Bush. Ryu's got a needlessly large rod. It's gonna be the Hourglass. It's okay, too. It's fine. There's still one more item to go. The thing is, okay, you also have the massive wall. And if people are already in a composition that is gonna run at you, you technically don't need to slow two for more damage, but it's very good if you want to start cutting around Trundle. I mean, Trundle is one of these champions. Obviously, he doesn't have any, you know, gap closes. He's gonna run at you. If you start slowing him down, it can become harder for Whirlip. It can become be hard, harder for the Evelyn as well. It's the same deal. Inconsistently dealing damage, and obviously what you want to do if you're real. Yes, you want to be the big damage dealer, but you also want to peel a bit for Yannan on this Tristana. So, like, the late game for H2K, these five on fives, is scary just looking at the two carries. Godfred and the rest of Giants may be a little caught out. Whirlip decides to engage. He's being exhausted. Here comes Pepe into the middle of the fight. He gets a gold card down before flashing out. Ryu's in the middle of the lane, channeling that Requiem. They've traded one for one so far. And again, another dramatic fight. Frederick is going to get the reset to run away. It ends up being a three for two. But H2K have got more carries alive. Jungle and support. H2K have got Super Minion pushing down. Yeah, there's no wave clear at all. There's the Tristana. H2K are looking for these Nexus turrets now. Another messy fight, as you just said, but it's just two teams smacking the heads against each other over and over. Chum the Waters is on Freddy, and Freddy's gonna jump away. Not gonna be enough. Kasing gets the headbutt pulverized. The laser's burning down the cow, but Hyanan's gonna take out the Nexus turret. He's got one. Turns his attention to another. Super minions are in the base. The Nexus is going down, and Giants will not be alive quickly enough. H2K will be sending Giants to the regional qualifier, and will be advancing to face Origin in the semi-finals. Well, that was a hell of a convincing series from H2K. Yeah. Despite game three being messier. Game three, though, was a game where Giants had a lot of options. Yeah. And I really don't feel like they used any of them. Whirlip was so strong, but not a single time did they manage to plan a gank or a counter gank for him. So instead of him going into these situations where he's like 1v2, 1v3, and he goes one for one, Add in a twist of fate. Add in an Evelyn who's reading the situation properly. And that becomes a two, maybe even a three zero in favor of Giants because that Trundle was so strong on his own. But we always saw the ganks and the twist of fate so uncoordinated. Two guys goes down for the gank when twist of fate has no ulti. Okay, then twist of fate gets the ulti, uses it mid lane in a gank that was never gonna work. Now it's on cooldown for the next fight Trundle has in the bottom lane and there's no help. There were just so many things they could have done. Yeah. They managed to use any of them. And then we just got these big 5 and 5 team fights, and we seriously talked about how Karthus is just going to sit there and be like, please run at me over and over. Yanan died once because all the focus was on killing Ryu, who then still could deal damage. And that's why, in the end, even though there were some close fights, it felt like H2K, as long as that cooldown's ready, would always come out at least one champion ahead. And that was enough once you had the base open. And the two previous games.